Hi and welcome to another NERPG tutorial. In this tutorial video I will be demonstrating how to use the new game wizard that is included with NERPG to create a minimal but playable game in around 60 seconds. I'll also be demonstrating some of the extra options that are available when using the wizard and do a little bit of a deep dive into what the wizard is doing behind the scenes. So let's go ahead and get started. If you don't already have a copy of NERPG, you can pick one up from nerpg.org slash downloads, and NERPG is available as a free Unity package or via source code through GitHub. The GitHub version has all the same functionality as the Unity package, but about half as many assets such as audio files, prefabs, etc. For this video, I will be using a free asset from the Asset Store to demo the new game wizard, and it's called the Ultimate Low Poly Dungeon, and I will include a link to that in the description of this video. I have a project here, which is basically a fresh installation of the NERPG 0.14a Unity package, and I've also downloaded the Broken Vector Low Poly Dungeon as well, which includes this dungeon demo scene that we are going to be using. Now, just to start and quickly demonstrate how fast you can get a minimal game up and running, let's go ahead and just do a, a minimal installation, basically without really adding any options to the new game wizard. And I'll set a timer so you can see how quick this really is. Go to the Tools menu, click on any RPG, Wizard and New Game Wizard. We will give our title for the game, New Game, and go ahead and leave every option at default and click on Create. The wizard is going through right now. It's adding a new directory for your game, adding a game manager, configuring the default options on the game manager, adding a first scene, and then installing some basic RPG building block templates that you can see with these checkboxes right here. This should finish up pretty quickly, usually in probably less than uh, 60 seconds, and we will have a playable sort of mini demo right out of the box. And there we go, one minute and one second. And I think that was a little slower than usual just because I'm recording this video right now. Let's go ahead and click OK. And we can see we've got a games directory here with our new game and a loading scene and the actual playable scene. And I can go ahead and I can press play. And let's actually make sure that maximize on play is checked because otherwise this is going to be really small. And we'll click on new game and we have an Uma character here. We can change his appearance, give him some hair, adjust his eyebrows, set whatever beard we want, maybe change his hair color give him some different colored skin. We can adjust the color of his eyes and even change him back and forth between male and female. I'm happy with that, so let's go ahead and just click on Start Game. And we will get a little pop-up window here just telling us what our controls are for the game because we have it in keyboard and mouse mode. And we've got our character here and we can run around inside of this default demo level. Of course, it's not really much fun running around inside of just a blank, empty, flat plane like this. So let's go ahead and make a game based around this ultimate low poly dungeon, which I pointed out earlier. To do that, we'll go to Tools, NERPG, Wizard, and new game wizard once again. I'm going to call the game this time the dungeon game 
and select the default player type as Mechanim. I'll set some main menu music, maybe Desert Caravan here, and then the new game music for the new game scene, and we'll just set it to a secret to tell you. The first scene, I'm going to rename that scene to just Dungeon, and the important thing here is to choose Copy Existing Scene, and then we'll drag in this dungeon demo scene that's actually included with the Ultimate Low Poly Dungeon. It's a nice dungeon that's set up right out of the box as pretty much a full, complete dungeon. For the ambient sounds, I'll choose a dungeon cave that'll have some nice water drips in the background. And for the music, I will just choose, let's see here, how about a dark, spooky forest theme. And we'll go ahead and click on Create and let the new game wizard run. It's doing everything it did before, but this time it's going to be setting up some audio profiles to ensure that the correct audio gets played, as well as installing gold, silver, copper for the currency, plate, cloth, and leather armor classes, stamina, intellect, agility, strength for the character stats, item qualities of common, rare, epic, etc. The power resources of rage, mana, energy, health, some unit toughnesses so you can have uh, normal toughness or boss toughness mobs, as well as all the weapon skills that are included, which are basically most common weapons like daggers, swords, bows, crossbows, wands, etc. And the new game wizard is now complete. And we could press play right now and we would actually be able to play this game, but what I want to do Actually, there's a couple things in this level that are going to cause things to not quite work properly, but I'm just going to actually press play so that we can see what those issues are. And I'll demonstrate how you would fix them. So we should be able to hear in the background of the video right now this um, desert caravan playing. And if I click on the new game menu, we can see the mechanism character that I chose, and you can probably hear the other music that we chose as well. Let's give him a name. We'll call him Dungeon Slayer. Click on Start Game. And you'll see that we paused here with some error messages, and we're getting this error that there are two audio listeners in the scene please ensure there is exactly one audio listener in the scene. And the reason we're getting that is because if we open up the scene utils folder here, there's actually a player included by default with this uh, demo level. And that player has a camera attached to it, which has an audio listener on it. So we actually want to delete that player because any RPG is going to be responsible for putting the player in this level. Let's go ahead and press play again. And there's one more error that's going to happen here. And I'll let that error happen so that I can demonstrate what we need to do to fix it in case you encounter something like this when you're using the new game wizard as well. Now by default you can see that our the floor is kind of see-through here. And our player basically just got stuck. And there's a really good reason for that. And that is because by default, all of the tiles in here are set to these some weird layers. So I'm just going to click on tiles and set the layer to default and choose yes, change children, because we want all of the actual like walls and floors and stuff to be on the default layer so that the character controller doesn't get any bugs basically. Finally, what I want to do is I actually want to set a different start position for the character so that we can start in that room that you saw at the beginning of this video. And let's just make sure we're in the right spot here. Okay, good. So we're in the room 
And now what I want to do is I want to search the project hierarchy for default spawn location. I'll just drag that into the scene here, middle click on the ground right here, and click Control alt f on the keyboard to move that to the current position where I had middle clicked the mouse previously. Now I can save that and go ahead and press play. And now we shouldn't get any more errors. So if I press play and go to new game, and we'll just give our guy his name again, Mr. Uh, Dungeon Slayer here. Click on start game. And now you can see that we've actually got the player properly spawning in. He's not floating around, he's not in the wrong spot, and there's no camera issues. And now I can just run around and fully explore the level and see this awesome demo scene that comes with the low poly dungeon set. And this this scene is is just really cool. It's got all sorts of stuff included with it. You know, we've got um uh, weapons racks over here with swords and spears and shields and it's actually quite a big castle it's a little bit of a maze you can get lost in here pretty easy and any RPG automatically made a map of this level as well as you can see we've got a mini map up here so let's take a look at what actually happened behind the scenes and what is required to actually have a game you can see that we have a games subdirectory in our project hierarchy here, and there's the new game and the dungeon game. The new game was the one just using that flat sample level, and then the dungeon game is the one that we just created right now. If we go into scenes, we can see there's a dungeon game scene. And let's just go take a look at this. This is the loading scene, and there's a reason that a loading scene is required and we don't just jump straight into the dungeon scene. The loading scene has the game manager in it and the game manager is what holds the system configuration manager which has basically all of the different options for the game that you can choose to configure the sort of default game wide options as well as the UI manager which controls the UI and all of the other major managers that manage the player level loading, input, cast targeting items, the data factory we get all our resources from, etc. And this is set to don't destroy on load by default and the issue with don't destroy on load in unity is that this object will persist through any scene change which is what allows us to use it to actually manage our game because we don't want this thing to get destroyed in between each scene change we want it to basically exist the whole time and keep the state of the game constantly um, but what happens is if you have the don't destroy on load object and you go to another scene with the same object, Unity will actually try to create two of them. So because we can basically jump out of the game and go back to the main menu and then jump back into the game, this actually needs to exist in a loading scene that's not even part of the main menu. So that's what this loading scene is. We have also got the dungeon scene. And if we go into the dungeon scene, you can see we've got this scene config um, prefab here. And what the scene config prefab does is we've got it set to load game on play, which means that if I press play in this scene, what it's going to do is it's actually going to look up the game manager. It's going to look up the initialization scene, the dungeon game. It's going to jump out to that dungeon game scene that we were looking at earlier that just has the game manager in it. And then it's going to basically continue the loading process through the main menu and allow us to actually load back into this dungeon scene with the player loaded. The new game manager created the 
entire directory structure that you see here underneath Dungeon Game. And in prefabs, we've got these game manager prefabs, which includes the UMA library, the scene config object, which you can drag into any scene, or if you're using the wizards, it's going to be in there automatically, and then the game manager that we saw earlier. It also created a portal, uh, the dungeon stone portal here, and what that is going to do is if we were to make a second level, um, this portal would actually basically allow us to teleport back to the first level. It also created a resources folder, and the resources folder is where all of the scriptable objects, you can think of that like a local database, um, are stored, and that defines every piece of content in the game. Now, in this simple game, we don't actually have anything in here like, you know, weapons or, or quests and whatnot. Um, and in fact, the only ability that we really have is basically like an attack ability here. Um, because we installed the weapon skills, we've actually got attack abilities for all the weapons. And I will demonstrate all those in a future tutorial video. We've got some audio profiles here. And you can see that we've got a main menu audio profile, which is defining basically the music that should be played when we're in the main menu, and a new game audio profile, which is when we're on that character creation screen, as well as the ambient sound audio profile, which is defining that dungeon cave that we chose, and then the actual background music, which was that dark spooky forest theme that we were listening to as well and then some audio for some of the basic weapons that are included. The other thing it did is it created some scene nodes, and in these scene nodes, this is what allows us to display a different title in the minimap than the actual name of the scene. So on disk, the scene names don't have any spaces, so if we wanted, we could set the name of the dungeon to show up differently, like um, Dungeon Castle or something like that. And then we'll actually see this name in the minimap where it's just loading the scene file called Dungeon. And then it's also linking to these audio profiles. And there are some other stuff in here, like we could disallow mounting if we didn't want our character to be able to ride a, a horse for example, or, or any other type of mount in the level. One other quirk that you might notice about this resources folder is that we've got the name Dungeon Game here twice. And there's a good reason for this. Um, as you know, we can have multiple games inside of the same Unity project with any RPG. And if we go to our game manager here, you can see this load resources folders, and we've got dungeon game listed here. So what happens is in Unity, when we're loading these resources, if you tell it to look just for objects in the dungeon game subfolder of resources, then it's only going to load these objects. And this is necessary because by default, if you ask it to load resources with no parameters, it's going to load everything under every resources folder in your entire project. So we've got a resources folder here. And if we look in the other game, we've got a resources folder there. And we wouldn't want Unity to load all the resources from a game that we're not playing. So this is why you've got basically dungeon game and then a resources folder and then a subfolder called dungeon game and it's so that we can basically filter out everything except for the resources for the correct game that we actually are currently playing. I think that's about enough for this episode so I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you found it useful and if you like the video then don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to the NERPG YouTube channel and maybe leave a comment in the description with any future tutorials that you would like to see. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you in the next video.